<laughs> Welcome to Simplified Physics. In this lecture, we are discussing on the vectors. This is the very first lecture on vectors throughout the topic or throughout the discussion after we'll discuss about the vectors and scalars, vector representations, some definitions of the vector algebra and vector addition. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share and comment and throughout this topic we'll try to crack these questions very simple questions are here try to crack and find the answers of the these questions let's begin today's lecture vectors and scalars physical quantities can be completely described with magnitude and direction And some categories of the physical quantities can be completely described only with magnitude. So physical quantity may be of two categories on the basis of the their representation. Some physical quantities can be completely described with the numerical value that means magnitude with units and some physical quantity requires direction as well. So let's begin with the vectors. Vectors are the physical quantities can be described completely with the numerical values with units and requires the direction and must obey vector algebra. Such physical quantity are vectors. Some physical quantity can be completely described with numerical values with units. Such quantity are called scalars and they can be they can obey they can be added subtracted or multiplied using the ordinary rules of the algebra that means they obey ordinary rules of algebra such quantity are called scalars some examples of vector velocity displacement etc are the vector uh, quantities and distance displacements time etc are scalars how can we represent vectors Vector can be represented by straight line with the arrow or alphabets with arrow head. It has the two point, a point starting point has no arrow and a terminal point has arrow. The point, this point starting point is called tail or initial point and ending point is called head or terminal point. In case of scalar, there is no arrow, so no initial and terminal point, and represented by alphabets only or a straight line without arrow head. Let's see some points on the vectors. In general, magnitude or modulus of the vector is represented by two bars with the vector. A vector if for a vector A modulus means or magnitude means two bars with the arrow or simply with the alphabets only and in general it is a scalar quantity. Vectors can be added, subtracted and multiplied. But division of the vector by another vector is not defined, is not a valid operation because division of a vector by vector is not a valid operation, simply direction cannot be divided that's why vector division is not a valid operation and let's see some definitions on the vector algebra equal vectors two vectors are said to be equal vectors if they have same magnitude and same direction uh, representing the same physical quantity in such condition they are called equal vectors let's say a and b are equal vectors they have same magnitude and same direction so they are called equal vectors now uh, second one negative of a vector it's not a third point it's a second one negative of a vector 
a vector is said to be negative of a vector if its magnitude is same as a given vector but direction is exactly opposite of a negative of a vector is a vector which has same magnitude as a given vector but has opposite direction such vector is called negative of a given vector suppose a vector a is given then negative of vector is represented by minus a vector and direction is just opposite of the vector a such vector is negative vector now let's go for the third point I had some error in numbering parallel vectors two vectors are said to be parallel from the name also parallel that means they must be acting along the same line or parallel to the given line such vectors are called parallel vectors if they have the same direction they are like vectors and if they are opposite direction they are unlike vectors or anti parallel vectors see here like vectors a and b are like vectors or parallel vectors c and d are unlike vectors or anti parallel vectors sometimes like vectors refers to the vectors representing the same physical quantity don't be confused it must be mentioned whatever required yeah in general like vectors means vectors which are acting along the same direction and parallel to each other such vectors are like vectors in some cases like vectors means vectors representing the same physical quantity C and D are anti parallel vectors and now null vector null vector means and the from the name also it is clear null means vector having the zero magnitude so it is called zero vector as well and a null vector is represented by zero width arrow head that is a null vector the tail point and head point of a null vector coincide that's why it has no specific direction null vector has no specific direction a very simple result we can get uh, a null vector simply addition of a vector with a negative of the same vector will gives null vector example the velocity vector for the stationary object is a null vector similarly acceleration vector for an object moving with a uniform velocity is also null vector unit vector from the name also it is clear unit vector means a vector having unit magnitude and for a vector a vector the unit vector is represented by a cap for a b vector similarly b cap c cap and so on so unit vector is represented by cap a cap for a vector a, a cap for a vector b, b cap and so on a unit vector is dimensionless vector but has magnitude 1 and direction is same as the given vector for any vector e we can write a vector as magnitude of the a a vector as magnitude of the a times unit vector a also unit vector is equal to a vector divided by its magnitude vector divided by its magnitude simply gives the unit vector next one coincide vector let's see the example first here a b c are coincide vectors in p and q are coincide vectors any idea co initial if the number of vectors have same initial point then such vectors are called co initial vectors look at the first and second example first set of vectors have the common initial point similarly second set of vectors have the common initial point so a b c are the coincidental vectors similarly p and q are coincidental vectors collinear vectors from the name also clear 
if they act along the same straight line they are called collinear vectors parallel or anti parallel vectors are also collinear vectors they are also we can say collinear vectors and angle between the collinear vectors are 0 for the parallel vectors and 180 for the anti parallel vectors that's obvious and coplanar vector coplanar vectors are the vectors which lie in the same plane or parallel planes these are the different types of vectors you can see or simply the basic definitions of the vectors once again recap the different vectors if required pause the video and proceed equal vectors next one negative of a vector third one parallel vectors fourth one null vector or zero vector fifth one unit vector sixth coincidental vectors seventh collinear vectors and last one coplanar vectors now let's go for the addition of vectors two or more vectors can be added well, now let's begin with the triangle of addition of vectors what does the statement say is if two vectors acting simultaneously at a point represents two sides of the triangle taken in same order same order see the motion of the cursor order of the vector if two vectors represents two sides of the triangle taken in the same order then the closing side of the triangle taken in opposite order see the motion of the cursor that the order of the vector then the closing side of the triangle represents a resultant of addition of the vector this is called triangle law of addition of the vector let's suppose p and q let's see, see in the figure p and q are the two vectors two vectors representing two sides of the triangle taken in the same order then the closing side or the third side of the triangle taken in opposite order represents the resultant of addition of the two vectors that is r vector equals to p plus q vector two vectors taken in the same order equals to third vector taken in opposite order p plus q equals to r that is the triangle law of addition of vector once again if two vectors representing two sides of the triangle taken in same order then third side of the triangle taken in opposite order represents the vector sum of two vectors that means simply the resultant of vector sum of two vectors r equals to p plus q yeah that is in terms of magnitude and direction as well that is simply called triangle law of addition of vectors if two sides of the triangle taken in same order represents two vectors in magnitude and direction that is means two sides these two sides represent two vectors in magnitude and direction p and q then the third sides represents the resultant of vector sum of two vectors in magnitude and direction this is called triangle law of vector let's try to find magnitude and direction of the resultant r vector so to determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant vector r produce the line oa to d and draw the perpendicular cd perpendicular od cd perpendicular od and let theta be the angle between 
two vectors OA and AC. And alpha is the angle between vector angle between the vector P with the resultant vector R. Okay, first of all let's find the magnitude of the vector R in right angle triangle ODC. Let's see in the triangle ODC use the Pythagoras theorem OC square equals to that is H square equals to CD square plus OD square CD square plus OD square that means P square plus B square H square equals to P square plus B square just using Pythagoras theorem expand the term OD OD has two part OA plus AD OA plus AD whole square plus CD square and in triangle ADC in triangle ADC cos theta equals to cos theta equals to AD by AC AD unknown AC equals to in terms of magnitude Q so AD equals to Q cos theta similarly if we take the sine sine theta equals to CD by sine theta equals to CD by AC AC once again Q CD equals to Q sin theta we get once uh, use the trigonometry for the triangle ACD find the use the cos theta and sin theta to find AD and CD then proceed now replace the values for OC square OC square equals to OC square that is the magnitude of R square similarly O equals to P AD equals to AD equals to here it is Q cos theta Q cos theta and CD equals to Q sin theta replace the values now open that is square P plus Q cos theta whole square that means apply A square A plus P whole square formula that is P square plus 2 PQ cos theta plus Q square cos square theta that is for the first term and Q square sin square theta as it is just open in the square only Q square sin square theta Q square and Q square you can take the common remaining terms first two terms as it is from the last two term Q square common cos square theta plus sin square theta and cos square theta plus sin square theta equals to 1 so we can write R square equals to P square plus 2 PQ cos theta plus Q square or R equals to square root of P square plus 2 PQ cos theta plus Q square this simply gives the magnitude of resultant vector R for the addition of the two vectors P and Q vector sum of two vectors P and Q in this way we can find the magnitude of the two vectors if required pause the video and see the process again Now let's go for the direction of the resultant vector R. Direction alpha is the direction that is the angle between resultant vector R with P. R alpha will let P alpha be the angle between the resultant vector R vector and P vector. Then in triangle ODC, tan alpha equals to CD by OD. OD CD by o, OD and OD expand once again CD uh, OD equals to OA plus AD OA plus AD and just replace to these values cos theta uh, uh, AD equals to Q cos theta CD equals to Q sin theta CD equals to Q sin theta OA in terms of magnitude OA equals to P plus AD equals to Q cos theta this gives the directions of resultant of addition of vector P and Q with P direction of the resultant vector R with P in this way we can find magnitude and direction of resultant vector R using triangle law of vectors
next one parallelogram law of addition of vector now once again if two vectors are acting simultaneously at a point are representing two adjacent sides of the parallelogram then the diagonal passing through the same point represents the resultant of addition of the two vector let's see in the diagram suppose p and q are two vectors two vectors acting simultaneously at a point represents two sides of the parallelogram then the resultant vector is the diagonal passing through the same point represent addition of the two vectors in magnitude and direction this is simply called parallelogram law of vectors addition so if uh, if two vectors acting simultaneously at a point two vectors p and q have suppose p and q acting simultaneously at a point acting at a point represents in magnitude and direction two sides of the parallelogram represents the two sides of the parallelogram in magnitude and direction two adjacent sides then the diagonal of the parallelogram passing through the same point here yeah, same common point represents the resultant of addition of the two vectors in magnitude and direction so r equals to r vector equals to p vector plus q vector let's uh, in the process of finding the magnitude and the uh, direction of the result and r vector is same first of all produce the line o a o a up to d and c drop perpendicular c d perpendicular o d sides of the parallelogram are equal o, o b equals to a c it's not a vector it's only the alphabet o b and a d a c are equal o b and a c are equal that means directions are same these are two equal vectors so ob vector equals to ac vector that is they are equal in magnitude and direction so we can write your q vector ac also has a q vector theta is the angle between the two vectors p and q this angle is theta so corresponding angle this angle is also theta and alpha is the angle between the resultant vector and vector p then to find the magnitude of r the process of finding the magnitude of r is exactly same as in the triangle law okay just uh, see the process once again as before i use the pythagoras theorem and just find the ad and cd in case of the triangle adc find the a D and C D using trigonometry. Then replace the values and find the resultant vector R that is magnitude of resultant vector R as square root of P square plus two P Q cos theta plus Q square one by two same as in the case of triangle law of addition of vectors now if required pause the video and see the complete process gradually now for the direction the process is as before Okay, if required, pause the video and learn it and try to find on your own in your copy. Now let's see the some special cases. Suppose two vectors are acting along the same direction in such condition theta equals to zero degree. What about the magnitude and direction? resultant vector magnitude of resultant vector r equals to we have p square plus 2 p q cos theta q square half and if they are two vectors p and q are acting along the same direction theta equals to zero replace the theta equals to zero cos zero degree means one 
so cos 0 means 1 we get a p square plus 2 p q plus q square just apply a square plus 2 a b plus b square that is p plus q whole square that is square root of p plus q whole square means p plus q only so magnitude of resultant vector is simply sum of magnitude of individual vectors if they are acting along same direction if they are acting in the same direction the magnitude of resultant is simply addition of magnitude of individual vector and upward direction tan alpha equals to q sin theta that is 0 degree plus ball by p plus q cos 0 degree simply equals to 0 that means tan 0 degree equals to 0 so we can say alpha equals to 0 degree that means direction is same as the direction of p and q so the conclusion is if two vectors are acting in same direction the magnitude of the resultant vector is simply the sum of magnitude of the individual vectors and the direction is same as the vectors given vectors let's see the case 2 if they are acting at right angles they are at right angles that means theta equals to 0 the magnitude of resultant r equals to p square plus 2 pq cos theta plus q square square root of and just replace the value theta equals to 90 degree cos 90 degree means 0 so resultant r equals to p square plus q square power of that is square root of p square plus q square this gives the magnitude of the resultant vectors resultant of addition of two vectors if they are inclined at 90 degree that means resultant r equals to square root of p square plus q square if theta equals to 90 degree if the angle between the two vectors p and q vectors is 90 and the direction is once again replace the value tan alpha equals to q sin theta theta equals to 90 degree by p plus q cos theta 90 degree sin 90 means 1 cos 90 means 0 so q by p so direction also depends on q magnitude of q and p if they are inclined at 90 degree now last case but not the least when the vectors act along the opposite direction that means theta equals to 0 if two vectors are acting in opposite direction the angle between the two vectors is 180 degree the magnitude of two vectors in such case r equals to p square plus 2 pq cos theta cos theta theta equals to 180 q square then cos 180 means minus 1 so p square plus 2 pq plus q square so simply what we get is square root of p plus q whole square it's it is in the form of a square minus 2 a b plus b square form so p minus q whole square square root of p minus q whole square that means resultant r equals to p minus q that means if two vectors are acting in opposite direction then magnitude of the resultant is equal to difference of difference of magnitude of individual vectors isn't it if they are acting in the same direction it is simply the sum of magnitude of individual vectors if acting in opposite direction difference gives the magnitude of the resultant and the direction upper direction tan alpha equals to q sin 180 degree by p plus q cos 180 degree equals to 0 degree is it 0 sin 180 means 0 so the whole quantity is 0 so we can say it's equals to tan 0 degree or tan 180 degree or theta equals to 0 degree or 80 degree 
that means direction is along the direction of the P or along the direction of the Q direction in general acts in the direction of the larger vector in this way we can find for some cases magnitude and direction of the given vector using the what relation we have derived in the vector addition law one more uh, law polygon law of vectors if number of vectors acting simultaneously at a point represents the sides of the polygons your a b c d are the it taken in same order yeah if the number of vectors acting simultaneously at a point represent in magnitude and direction by the sides of the polygon taken in the same order taken in the same order here a b c d are the vectors representing the sides of the polygon taken in the same order then the closing side of the polygon represents the resultant of addition of addition of the vectors in magnitude and direction that means for the vectors a b c d the resultant vector vector r vector equals to a plus b plus c plus d plus for this relation is valid for any number of vectors yeah maybe two three four whatever five six maybe so that is valid for so if number of vectors acting simultaneously on a body represents the sides of the polygon taken in the same order then the closing sides of the polygon taken in opposite order represents the resultant of the addition of the vector in magnitude and direction so we can verify as well simply suppose a b a and b are the two vectors only consider two vectors then we can take the using the triangle law we can find the one vector from in this direction suppose r1 then r1 plus c1 two vectors you may draw one line r1 plus c1 may form the triangle if you draw the diagonal one more diagonal here diagonal then r1 plus c1 means suppose here r2 vector then r2 vector and d vector are also forms the using the r2 plus d vector in the same order and the opposite order r vector r vector equals to r2 plus d vector that means a plus b plus c plus d vector r2 equals to a plus r2 equals to r1 r1 equals to a plus b so a plus b plus c gives the r2 similarly r gives the a plus b plus c plus d in this way we can verify as well and this is the end of the topic any queries or solution may forward through the mail address or may comment also forward through the uh, facebook don't forget to subscribe share and like and thanks for the watching